It's raining cats and dogs. What an interesting phrase. I never really thought about it until recently, but I thought, ah, what if it did rain cats and dogs? Like, uh, at first the phrase may seem ridiculous, and if you think it is, uh, I'm going to show you that you would be absolutely correct and that it is a stupid thing to say. But let's talk about it more in depth anyway. So what does the phrase mean? Well, it means there's torrential rainfall, or for those of you that find torrential to be too long a word, lots of rain. Interestingly, it's not the only phrase used to describe a lot of rain. A few I can think of that are also strange here, it's bucketing down, or it's pissing out of the heavens, or my favorite, lovely weather for ducks. These are strange, but they also make sense if we take the bucket one. If you were to bucket a bucket, if you are bucketing, you'd either be filling up the bucket or pouring the contents of the bucket out, which makes sense in the context of rain, you'd be pouring water out. Heaven is generally taken to be upward, so if people were in heaven were to be pissing, they would be pissing down on earth. Rain falls down on earth, piss is wet, rain is wet. This one, yeah, makes sense. Nice weather for ducks is dumb, but understandable because ducks seem to like water, given that they paddle around aimlessly for most of their life. So yes, ducks like water, but they don't really like rain, so this phrase falls apart there. However, the intent is obvious and understandable, being that ducks like water and rain is water. So I'll let it pass. But let's go back to the original phrase for the video. It's raining cats and dogs. Let's try and understand it for a second. Mm. No, there's no way to understand it. It makes no sense. Why on earth would cats and dogs be raining from the sky? What a wacky idea. So while it doesn't make sense, let's look at what would happen if it were to rain cats and dogs. What impact would raining cats and dogs have on the planet? To start, we need to define how many cats and dogs would rain if it were to rain cats and dogs. This is a subjective question, but I'm going to replace each raindrop with either a cat or a dog. Some of you might think that that's a little bit overkill, but I think it's the only logical route to take because any less than it wouldn't be the torrential rainfall that the phrase is trying to convey. But I will acknowledge I'm trying to apply logic to something illogical and something that makes no sense in the first place. Let's say the cats and dogs rain at a perfect one-to-one -one ratio, which to me seems like the way it would work from the original phrase being cats and dogs, not two cats and a dog. For, from a few minutes on Google, we can see that the average weight of a cat is 4 kilograms and the average weight of a dog is 8.2 kilograms. So I'm using the weight of pet cats and pet dogs rather than tigers and wolves because that seems like the right thing to do. I don't know why, but it just does. So if we take the average of the two, we can see that each raindrop will be replaced by 6.1 kilograms of animal. What impact would this have during torrential rainfall? First of all, I need to acknowledge that the cats and dogs will be clipping inside each other because there isn't enough space between normal raindrops to fit cats and dogs between, but for simplicity's sake, we won't factor this in. If you were to stand outside, you would likely be crushed within a few seconds due to the immense weight of cats and dogs continually falling on your head, not to mention the dreadful smell that would cover the entire area due to animals splatting on the ground. It's also likely that roofs of houses would collapse in due to cats and dogs hitting it at terminal velocity from the sky, terminal velocity of these animals being around 100 kilometers an hour, which is a little bit less. So the first thing to note is that if you were in the general vicinity of cats and dogs falling from the sky, you will most likely die or be trapped in wherever you hid. But those results are a little bit boring, so let's look at it on a global scale. Before I start with the maths, I just want to say I'll be using metric. And if you don't use metric, you need to realize that you live in the 21st century. Every year, it rains about 5.1 by 10 to the power of 14 cubic meters of water across the globe. For those who aren't familiar with scientific notation, that's 510-000-000-000-000 cubic meters of water. If the average size of a raindrop is 0.05 millimeters, then there are 20,000 raindrops in a litre. And that means by multiplying by 1,000, because there are 1,000 litres in a cubic metre, we find that there are 20 million raindrops in one cubic metre. If we multiply this by our 510 trillion cubic metres of water that falls on the planet per year, we see that there are about 1.02 times 10 to the power of 19 drops of water raining on the surface of the planet each year. Replacing the water with either a cat or a dog being spawned in from nowhere for each drop of water 
would mean that the Earth would increase in mass by 1.02 by 10 to the power 19 multiplied by the 6.1 kilogram average of cats and dogs we found earlier. This is 6.222 by 10 to the power 19 kilograms every year. How heavy is this? Well, that's equivalent by 1.037 by 10 to the 16 African bush elephants or 13 billion 826 million one world trade centers or 24 sextillion 880 quintillion cheese puffs this may seem like a lot on a global scale but that's only one 95,980 first the weight of the planet this can also be described as the weight of the moon every 1,180 years. So if the planet were to double in weight, it would take 95,981 years of replacing every raindrop with either a cat or a dog. Before this could happen, we'd run into a problem in that the entire distance between both the ground and the clouds would already be full of cats and dogs. So let's pretend that the distance they fall from will rise as the cat and dog level of the planet rises so that we can continue to keep it rising. As well as this, the mass of Cats and dogs are less dense than the planet, so how big would the planet be if we doubled its mass with only cats and dogs? Let's take the density of cats and dogs to be 980 kilograms per meter cubed. I think this is a fair estimate considering bone and bullet volumes. The average density of the planet at the moment is 5,515 kilograms per meter cubed, making it far more dense than cats and dogs. So the volume of cats and dogs being twice the size of the earth would be 5,515 divided by 980 or 5.627 times greater than that of the planet already. This would make it quite literally astronomically large. And the layer of the cats and dogs on the planet would be deeper than the entire diameter of the planet that we have today. This would result in everything on the surface level of our planet being crushed down under immense pressure and everything would be red hot. Currently the largest layer of the earth is the mantle, which is just hot magma. The new largest layer of the planet, after 5,000 years of cats and dogs reigning, would be the cat and dog mantle, or that's what I'm calling it anyway, and it would consist of a hot, gooey mess of fluff and guts. Sounds lovely. So, in conclusion, um, it's a dumb phrase, and I was looking too much into it.